weapon did Kazakh batters fight the Zangars? What did the chambers of the Khan of all three Jews look like? What connects Abilai Khan and the northernmost city of Kazakhstan? We will tell and show everything in Welcome to Kazakhstan Project. Petropavl is a quiet city, far from high-profile events and shocks. However, it also has something to offer for the guests of Kazakhstan. Of course, first of all, we are talking about the residence of Abilai Khan. Today, we will visit a unique museum complex that tells about the most important pages of Kazakhstan's history. My name is Zakir Ramamlutov. This is Welcome to Kazakhstan Project. Let's broaden our horizons. Abilai Khan ruled in those years when the fate of the Kazakh people was being decided during the confrontation with the Zangars. It is known that through negotiations and diplomacy, he kept a balance between China and the Russian Empire. In 1765, a special guest house for such negotiations was built near the fortress of St. Peter on the banks of the Yasil River. This is what the head of the Petropavl Fortress's garrison, Major General Davids, wrote to the commander of the Siberian Corps, Springer, in May 1765. Abelai Sultan sent his own son, Boris Sultan, with 14 people to me in the fortress of St. Peter, opposite which the construction is required. And already in October, David's reports on what was built. The chambers of Abilai Sultan, office, bathhouse, house for Kyrgyz Kaisak foremen visiting Abilai Sultan. Thus, for more than half a century, a spacious wooden house served as the Khan's headquarters. But after one of the fires in 1821, a new building made of stone was erected on the site of a wooden one. There used to be a military hospital, a military unit, and even a place for local boys to play. In the 90s of the 20th century, the building stood ownerless, although it was under the protection of the state. There were ruins. Everything was destroyed. There was no roof. The walls were ruined. 606 million tenge were allocated under the Cultural Heritage Program for the restoration of this building. The building was erected, and on August 21st, 2008, our museum was opened for visitors. The museum was opened by the first president of our country, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev. Our museum has a book of honorable guests on the first page, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev left his inscription where it is written that he wishes prosperity to our museum. There are four halls in the residence. We will begin the tour with the first one, Periods of Khan Abilai's life, which presents a panorama of the battle with the Zangars. If it were not for the exploits of the batters of those years, if not for the strong-willed decisions of Khan Abilai, then who knows what could await the Kazakh people. As a result, the Zangars remained in the history textbooks only. Abilai is Abil Mansur. He was born in 1711 in the south of Kazakhstan, in Turkestan. Abilai came from a noble Khan family. Here we can look at the Shejire of Kazakh sultans and Khans, starting with Barak Khan, who ruled at the beginning of the 15th century. In the business, 
We have four halls. One of them, in which we are now, is the room for rest. It is worth paying attention to the walls of the room. This is the reconstruction of a four-room wooden house, which was built by the Russian Empire specifically for Abelai Khan in 1765 by order of Catherine II. The room itself was furnished in the style of a yurt to make it comfortable for Abelai. After all, Kazakhs were a nomadic people. There are many ancient exhibits in our exposition. One of them is this Quran, dated by the 18th century. In 2012, Mullah Kuanish Berkimbaev gave it to us as a gift. As experts have found out, this book was written during the rule of Abla Khan approximately between 1740-1780. There are also bookmarks in the Quran. From these tabs, one can determine that in 1900 the book was in St. Petersburg. But who brought it, from where and why, remains a mystery to this day. Also, pay attention to this bed, or rather to its shape. Both sides are raised up. If a person lies in this position, then his blood circulation improves and blood pressure normalizes. The bed itself is decorated with bones and ornaments. Another relic is an old kebeje, that is, a wooden chest for storing food and dishes, also an article of the 18th century. In the old days, this chest served as refrigerator. Food was put there and left in a cool place in the yurt, where there was no sunlight. If you look at its front, it is decorated with beautiful floral patterns. Our exposition is rich in many other ancient exhibits. There are a lot of them. For example, these ornamental chests also belong to the 18th century. There are a lot of artifacts in the museum. One of them is an old Dombra of the 18th century. They call it Kara Dombra. Everyone knows that Abelai Khan was very fond of playing Dombra and was the composer of 20 cues. And who knows, maybe the hands of the great Khan touched this instrument. The third hall of the museum is the throne room. It was here that all important meetings took place. Also, there are the attributes of power presented in the exposition. A scepter, the Khan's ring with a seal, breast ornament known as Alka. The room is decorated with valuable carpets and items of armor. The center of the composition is the figure of Abelai Khan. Мы с вами находимся в тронном зале Аблайхана. В тронном зале нашего музея также находятся уникальные экспонаты. We are in the throne room of Abelai Khan. There are also unique exhibits in the throne room of our museum. One of them is the spear of Tishkan Batir, passed down to us by his descendant in the sixth generation, Nurlan Begjanov. He himself is from the Shalakan district of the North Kazakhstan region. The spear itself is dated by the 18th century. Also, at this exhibit, you can see the armor of a Kazakh butter. These are a shield with a saber, a spear, a club, a battle axe, eyeball ta, and sword makaira. In the 18th century, it was known that the butters wielded five types of weapons. These were piercing, cutting, throwing, chopping, and impact weapons. Also in this room, we have another unique exhibit. This horse harness is also from the 18th century. It is made of felt mat, trimmed with leather and decorated with silver. Here he is, the great ruler of the Kazakh people. By the way, Abulai Khan knew seven languages, and they say he was very witty. He treated art, sciences, and culture with great honor and respect. No wonder he was raised on a white felt mat, being recognized as the ruler of all three Kazakh Jews. In the fourth hall, documents related to the reign of Abelai Khan are presented. For example, there is a stand dedicated to Bukhar Jarao, a kun, storyteller and chief advisor of Abelai Khan. Bukhar Jarao can be considered, without slip of the tongue, the main ideologist of the Kazakh steppes of those years. Go 
выходя из зала в зал. Moving from hall to hall, you understand that the history of Kazakhstan keeps many unknown facts. Manuscripts and copies of documents from the archives confirm that Abulai Khan was indeed the Khan of all Khans. It was him who preserved the strength of the Kazakh people, created a disciplined army, returned all previously lost lands, and most importantly, he established peace in the Kazakh steppes.